Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, I got another comparison video for you, and I, we are going to compare the 2020 White Sox to the 2020 Houston Astros, who probably won't be cheating quite as much as they were in 2017. But that's for another video, and uh, it's another video that I've already recorded, so you might want to go back and look at that. So, anyway, you can see up here on the board, these are my white socks, and uh, I've been over this before. The lineup, you got Lewis Robert, center field, um, Tim Anderson at short, Moncada at third, Abreu at first, Encarnacion at DH, Grandal at catcher, Jimenez in left, Mazzara in right, and uh, probably Bandergall at second, with Mendick starting the season possibly at second um, until Mandragal is called up when his uh, free agent clock won't start um, for this season, for the coming season. And they could also, you can see I've got Lurie Garcia here at the top of the bench, and they could also put Lurie Garcia at second base. But as I also mentioned in another video, it's probably the better idea to put Lurie Garcia as the uh, super utility man and let him sit on the bench and be able to go in, you know, to the outfield if needed, to pinch hit, to pinch run. He's probably better served as a uh, utility, um, super utility guy. Um, and then let Mendick play second base until Mandrigal comes up. You got the rotation, Giolito, Keuchel, um, Gio Gonzalez, uh, Lopez, Dylan Cease, probably Dylan Cease, um, and then Kopech, we'll see what happens with Kopech. Again, a lot of decisions to be made probably at the time of, you know, breaking camp from spring training and heading north to Chicago. Uh, but we'll see. So right now I've got Kopech listed out there in, in the uh, bullpen. You've uh, also got a bullpen that uh, has Cordero, Colome, Bummer, Marshall. Uh, Colome and Marshall were recently um, signed by the White Sox for another uh, year, avoiding arbitration. Um, Fulmer, Fry, Herrera. And the newly signed Steve Shishak. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's a hard name to pronounce. Um, who you will not see up here now is definitely is Covey, Dylan Covey, because Dylan Covey was designated for assignment and will probably be in the White Sox minor league system to start the season. And uh, whether we see him at some point or not, who knows? Um, Probably depends on his development down there and what injuries, if any, we have in on the pitching staff. And then, of course, the bench, Lurie Garcia, James McCann, Zach Collins, and Adam Engel. So that's the White Sox. Quick rundown of the White Sox. I've done the other White Sox videos where I've compared them to other teams. You can go back and check those out. Um, and I will also... Put a, uh, put a link to a lot of those um, in the description if you want. If you want to go back and just click on those and then check those out if you haven't. So this is what we got here. Now here is the, uh, here's the, the projected lineup for the uh, Houston Astros. The cheating Houston Astros. Of course... You know, you've got George Springer, who last year hit 298 with 39 home runs. And you've got El Tuve, who last year hit over 300 with 31 home runs. And then you've got Michael Brantley, who hit about, I don't know, what was it, 296 with 20-something, 20 22 home runs, maybe? And then you've got Alex Bregman, who had 41 home runs. And then you've got uh, Yuli Gurriel at first, and you've got Jordan Alvarez, their new rookie guy who uh, was 
the DH for uh, some of last year and managed to hit 27 home runs in 390, 386 or something like that at bats. Um, and then, of course, Carlos Correa is an all-world shortstop. And, you know, everybody knows about him. Josh Reddick in right field. You have to get down to Martin Maldonado before they have a bad hitter. Now, here's my thing. You do not put up stats like this lineup does because someone's banging on a trash can. You're probably good enough to do what you're doing without the trash can banger. Maybe they help you every once in a while, but this lineup is almost as good as it gets, I think. Um, and then you got the rotation, Justin Verlander. Of course, he's all world. He had a 258 earned run average last year and won 21 games. Got Zach Grenke. Grenke had a, like a 298 something, um, something like that earned run average, and I think he won 18 games. And Lance McCullers did not play last year, but he's projected to be in their starting lineup. Um, he is coming off an injury, and I'm not even sure if he'll start the season for them. So that may be somebody else in their uh, rotation instead of McCullers to start the season. But at some point, McCullers will probably be in there. You got Jose Urquidy, who was only up for a little bit last year. He pitched 41 innings, had a 395 earned run average. Then you got Brad Peacock, who uh, shuffled between the starting rotation and the bullpen last year and had like a 411 earned run average. Um, he's a pretty solid guy. So their only real question mark is your quitty. What will your quitty do when he pitches an entire season? And Lance McCullers, you know, when is he going to be back? Then you got a bullpen that's got Roberto Osuna, Ryan Presley, Josh James, who is one of their up and coming young uh, flamethrower guys. Chris Devensky is another one of their like um, highly touted pitchers. Um, and Josh James, I think, and Devensky have both started. So it, it's something to be on the lookout for. Maybe they'll be in the rotation in place of uh, possibly your quitty if he can't handle it. Or Lance McCullers, you know, to start the season until McCullers can come back. Um, you got Framber Valdez, Joe Biagini, Austin Pruitt, who I had mistakenly said, or maybe at the time it wasn't a mistake, I don't know. But I had said he would be in, he was projected to be in the Tampa Bay bullpen uh, this coming year. But apparently uh, Tampa Bay traded him to Houston. So... He will not be in that um, in the Tampa Bay bullpen. He will probably be in the Houston bullpen. And just a side note, as far as things that were on previous uh, comparisons and are no longer valid, is that I had said that um, the third baseman for the Twins would be, um, I believe, Sano. But right now it looks like it's going to be... Um, Who's that guy? The guy that they, uh, Josh, um, well, anyway, um, the, yeah, the big free agent they just signed. I forget his name. God, names just slip right out of my head. I don't know. Um, and then Joe Smith you get, rounds out their bullpen. Joe Smith, whose name sounds like he was uh, part of the uh, witness protection program. And then uh, the, the bench, um, you got Kyle Tucker, Garrett Stubbs, Miles Straw, Dustin Garneau, and Almedis Diaz. That's really not a very inspiring group, but then again, it doesn't have to be unless they have a lot of injuries in their starting um, lineup. So, Josh Donaldson, that's it. Yes, the Twins guy that I was trying to think of, Josh Donaldson. So yeah, now the Twins have Josh Donaldson. But anyway, this is not the Twins comparison video, but I just wanted to point that out, that before I had said Sano would be their third baseman, and now it looks like maybe Sano will be their, their DH and Donaldson will be their third baseman. So that's going to make the Twins a little tougher, assuming Donaldson can stay healthy. But anyway, back to the Astros.
So anyway, that's what we've got for the Astros. Um, it's it's a good team that they do have question marks in their rotation, and really, no, no, that bullpen is pretty good. That because they've got some good young arms out there with uh, with James and Osuna will probably be their closer and um, and uh, Davinsky and uh, even Framber Valdez. So. That's a pretty solid bullpen, but yeah, the, the rotation, once you get past Grenke, there's just question marks. So we'll see. I think the White Sox match up favorably with Houston in the rotation. If you look at it one through five, they, they match up favorably with them. Um, but they don't match up favorably in the first two slots. I mean, Giolito is really good, but... He's not Verlander, and um, you know, and and Keuchel is also very good, but he's uh, he's not Grenke. Although we'll see, Grenke. It looked like near the end of last year, Grenke was starting to slip, so maybe he's starting to get on the slippery slope. But Verlander definitely isn't. So we'll see. I mean, I don't think that. The um, whoever the new manager for the Astros ends up being, I don't think it's it's going to have much of an impact, especially if they hire from within and they hire like their uh, bench coach uh, or somebody from their minor league system who's managing in their minor leagues. Especially if they hire somebody like that, it's going to have absolutely zero effect because the person's going to know know the team inside and out. Um, but ma a manager only accounts for, you know, maybe four wins, f plus or minus four wins is all a manager's worth, um, aside from what the team would normally do. So I don't think that's going to have an effect. Missing the general manager probably won't have an effect either, um, because again, he'll probably Lunau is probably going to be replaced by somebody who worked under Lunau um, and from within the organization. So they're going to pick up right where he left off. Very likely, they won't be quite as good as Lunau uh, because I mean I think he's really good, especially at identifying talent. So that's more of a long-term thing, though. They'll miss him long-term, but they're not going to. I don't think that. 2020 is going to be affected that much by the uh, the loss of Jeff Lunau uh, for that particular season. Um, so, and then, um, yeah. I mean, the draft picks that they lost from the cheating scandal are going to hurt, but again, they're going to hurt long term. They're, you're not going to see that in 2020. In 2020, all you're going to see is this great lineup and this um, potentially still very good starting rotation although we'll see how which way the question marks go right so Houston is going to be a tough team but we um, they're in the West so we're not going to play them that much um, this upcoming season we'll probably only play them seven or eight times the entire season um, because we're going to be playing a ton of games against the AL Central. So, but that is, I mean, the Astros are still a, pert a pertinent team. They're still very good. I think they can still win the West. Um, you know, I've, I've heard people make comments um, that, like, the Angels are going to win the West. And they won't unless they work on their pitching staff. They still have a lot of work to do on that pitching staff. You know, um, signing Dylan Bundy is not going to cut it. So the Angels got a ways to go um, still to beat this team with that lineup. Um, and you're going to see on the field this year, you're going to see that the cheating thing is only marginal, probably only marginally helped them. Because they're still going to hit. And they're still going to hit just about like they did. That Alvarez kid, 
He doesn't need people banging on a trash can. Believe me. So they're going to be a, a, a potent lineup, even without people banging on trash cans. So, um, you know, all the people out there that said that they wouldn't have won the 2017 World Series without that help, no, I'm not buying it. You can go back and watch my previous video when I talk about the, uh, the continuing scandal. I've got two videos on the, uh, the Astros cheating scandal. So you can go back and check those out. And uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the idea that that's why they won the World Series. No. That's why they won the World Series. And... Uh, so anyway, that's my, that's, I'm speaking my piece again on my soapbox again. But, um, yeah, there's my uh, comparison of the 2020 White Sox to the 2020 Houston Astros, who, uh, I think we're going to be much more competitive against, uh, certainly because, you know, the work that the White Sox front office has done has been great, but, we will see how much it's um, going to help when we have to play the Astros. Th that's the real test. That's when you can see what you're made of, is when you're playing teams like the Astros. So anyway, before I sign off, I want to say subscribe, share, and like the video. And, you know, let people know. Let people know about Sportsman Z and all the White Sox videos that are going to be coming out. And... I mean, there's going to be a ton of baseball coverage this year, so uh, you don't want to miss that. But right now, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.